So there's already a road between this city-state and the other. So I'm actually going to send the route down to myself. Six gold per turn is good. But it's going to put a lovely road over to Mali. Just a bit of culture farming quickly. There's that unit killed. Games and recreation given to me. Pillage some got. Do we worth pillaging we got? Yeah, we're going to pillage that. I'm going to pillage the faith. And after that point, then we're going to just take the city. I could pillage some more gold. But I'm not going to for now. Singapore taken. Nicely loyal. My fifth city. And the swarm moves forever on. Next stop, Chingeti, the next city state with zero gold for levied units. That means that they have no army. Ho 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 ho. That's going to be rather unfortunate for them, I feel. Ah, people are denouncing me now. Yes. Well, that's the sort of thing that tends to happen when you do this much early war. But it doesn't matter. We're gaining momentum. Momentum is exactly what you would need. Our first unique district is finished. We've got a lot of culture per turn from that. And I think more hoplites. I think that's a that's a fair and sensible thing to do. I do have a spare envoy. Let's send it to Geneva. I, I think a city-state that gives me bonuses for being at peace is definitely the sort of city-state I'm going to want this game. Some citrus now. Marley is still buying things from me. I will declare war on them very soon, so I don't want to take too many gold per turn deals from them. And two turns until we can build Statue of Zeus. Now, Statue of Zeus has to go on flat lands either side of your encampment. Now, I think we can put it on floodplain? Debatable that. Maybe we can't, but we could put it on this forest town. So it's not, you know, there's, there's hope. We can still do it either way. But um, yeah, Statue of Zeus. Why am I so excited about it? 50% production towards anti-cav units. That's already a double bonus with my hoplites. And three archers, three spearmen, and a battering ram for three. Like, I mean, I, I guess it's not three because I've spent all that on, you know, getting it in the first place. But still, you you see the joy here. Moderate flood. Oh, luckily my hoplite didn't die then. I was just moving it around that particular river. Chingeti still zero military, so war it is. And Amani over to Geneva, which we've actually already almost taken over, but as you can see, my army is ready to go. Most importantly, my catapult is ready to attack, move and fire. This is why grit generals are so important early game. A catapult cannot move and fire. Look, it even says it in the abilities, cannot move and attack in the same turn. However, this has been a bug since Civ 6 first was released and it has not been patched, which makes me think that maybe it was deliberate, but I don't know. If you have anything that increases a catapult's movement above its regular starting movement of two, so in this case a great general gives it plus one movement, then it can move and attack. So that's why I've moved on to this tile, and same turn I can attack and destroy half of the walls of the city. It can be rather amusing. Uh, my army is just following shortly behind. Suddenly, these cities to myself are beginning to look, how best do I put this, mighty tasty. The nomage level is very high. And now that I've got Statue of Zeus, I want to prepare for my pikemen, and I want to get feudal contract to do that. That lets me build medieval and renaissance anti-cav units of 50% faster. So that's where we're going to go now. I also saved up 480 gold. So gold will be used to buy a catapult. Now, if I had any city with a stable in it, I would buy it there because it would give me extra experience on the catapult. I don't. So I'm going to do it in the city that's closest. It's going to take me just a couple of turns to get the great general in range to be able to reinforce but two catapults, well, that makes things a lot easier. There we go. Now you're denouncing me. They're starting to realize the problem with old Ursa. Doesn't look like Ursa's going to stop. Well, unfortunately for you, that revelation may have come a little bit too late. I'm just going to unhook Sun Tzu because this catapult's coming in and I'm just going to move you onto this tile so that the catapult gets an extra movement next turn. Marley has a swordsman, by the way, which can be a problem, uh, except it's not because even though I've got an anti-cav unit, my hoplite actually attacks at the same combat power. I might need a couple of archers just to make that a little bit easier but it's it's very useful statue of zeus i can build it on floodplain never in doubt never did i doubt that fact now that i've got a huge army this is the time to build the warlord's throne if i'd done it earlier yes i probably would have triggered it a couple of times by now but i wouldn't have had anywhere near as big an army so i it's all six and two threes but i i kind of like how it's played out one two three and four Chingeti falls. Feudalism is boosted because I have six farms and the city is minorly disloyal. Only minorly. The population of the city is actually as high as my capital so I could move Pingala over which would be fairly useful. 
I don't know what the loyalty is going to be like in this city. Actually, Amani, I mean, as fun as it is getting Geneva on side, I'm going to do that naturally anyway. You come and keep this new city loyal for me. So as you can see, we have a city to my right, and it's difficult sometimes to know which direction to move in. What you can do is just have a look at the tile. You'll see that it's Taudini or Taudeni. Trade with Mali. Have a look at the city. Three population. So it's not as high a priority, actually, as maybe going south and taking that five population city so we're going to move my army in that direction instead it's also no walls here and it's a uh, totally flat land so this this absolutely looks like a really good place to attack there are some of Mali's units nice it's all about catapult placement however that's what I want to make sure that in the first turn my catapults can move and attack the city almost instantaneously oh Mali's got a catapult of their own that's uh intriguing they appear to have a bit of a desert storm going on this could be an almighty clash at the beginning of this uh, combat salvo. As I say, I don't need to initiate combat until I'm happy that I have the advantage because I am totally unscrupulous and I don't mind just forcing an advantage for myself here. Which city is directly to myself? There's the capital. Interesting. Normally the capital is the highest population city. Again, we can work it out. They have 34 population and if we count up everything, it goes 6, 11, 16, 22, 26, 28, 30. So the capital only has four populations, so actually going in this direction is probably the more sensible thing to do. Your warriors stray far from the hunting grounds. Don't, don't worry about that. You kind of can ignore the AI. <laughs> if they say something you don't like, just ignore it. It's the easiest way to do it. Uh, you know what? Actually, this is a good time to attack. So now we're going to do it, but I'm going to course this bear life formal war with them. Less grievances, less war weariness. i move my units through a little bit. I think I can just immediately come in and attack and kill yes I can that warrior lovely stuff let's see how Marley responds they're gonna move their units around and use a warrior to attack my hoplite not a good move not a good move at all friend um one thing I will do then with my governor so I could improve Pingala but I'm actually gonna get Victor in just to give myself another governor on the front line so that I'm not having to rely on moving Pingala around their swordsman isn't attacking me so I'm going to say okay fine and move my hoplites round and see if we can surround the capital attack one attack there is that gonna get the kill no I'll get the catapult to attack there then to attack there perfect right now we've got both catapults in range of the city fairly easily even if it puts its walls up we're not gonna mind We've got defense and we've got reinforcements just behind the scenes as well. Oh, this is looking like a fun attack, isn't it? It's a very useful road that I could build. I think connecting our Ma to my capital would be quite a good one. Let's do that. At least we then have a road that connects all of my cities together just in case I want to reinforce from the far reaches of my land. All oh, these, these unique districts, so much culture per turn. This is what I love about playing Greece. They are so, so good. They're just working on all the stuff behind the scenes, like the culture and the great people points whilst you're at war. You don't really have to focus on one thing at the expense of everything else. You can do it all simultaneously. If I move you that, if I move you that, and I move you that, and you that, now I can go one catapult, two catapults, and then three, four, five, take city. Look at that. And already where it's only minus 13.9, rubbish victor comes in and we can keep the city safe for about nine turns which um is otherwise known as plenty of time for me to sort all of my other units out in other cities nice commercial hub as well it's not generating me anything but it will give me some merchant points per turn and uh, merchant points per turn are very very handy great merchants generally just give you more gold the easiest way of looking at it just more gold for more army and now yeah let's just lay siege to the capital you're gonna move their swordsmen now, are you? Okay, that's fine. Are you building the Apadana for me as well? Again, not a problem. Don't mind this at all. Let me just leisurely and lazily move my catapults on the scene. A military tactics with a 45 strength pikeman, which is improved by a great general, and uh, you know, very soon, potential of getting a great general that can form a core. El Cid. Very fun. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We don't need to worry about that just yet. A second great general. Not useful now, but don't worry. They will be very soon. Especially now the siege of the capital has begun. Oh, and I can just lazily rain catapult shots onto the city without taking any damage myself. In fact, it's just a... Uh, do a spot of pillaging whilst we're here. Delightful. Actually, there's no need to even wait. Let's just get attacking. Cool. Oh, Etamananki. 
Oh, Marley, you really, really shouldn't have. Now, the next and best point in this guide is actually, it's sort of half a joke and half quite serious. You want to make sure that your troops survive a long time. It sounds a little bit, well, the best word be obvious when I say that, but what I mean is that the more a troop upgrades, the more promotions it gets. And as you get a troop with four or even five promotions, they become incredibly powerful, especially later into the game, once you start unlocking things like nationalism to make cores, mobilization to make armies, you start upgrading them, we're already talking about pikemen as an upgrade, but later into the game with these anti-cav units, we'll unlock things like pike and shot, and then later on anti-tank crew. Siege has a really, really good promotion tree. Melee has a really good promotion tree, anti-cav. It's very, very good to keep your troops alive for as long as you can. I mean, you can see this. If this hoplite was level three and it was attacked by a melee unit on defensible terrain, it would get plus five against melee, plus 10 when defending against melee, so that's 15, and then plus seven when defending on terrain. So that's plus 22 combat strength. Huge, huge promotion tree. So as I like to upgrade my troops and they get to level two, what I like to do is I like to commemorate them by naming them. If I name them, you become attached to them and then you'll look after them more or you'll get incredibly guilty when they die. One of the two. For me personally, it's a really good way to say thank you to the Patreon supporters. So let's throw some names in. Helicopter Kicker, one of our favorite anti-cav specialists. Jono, I know you like to be giant death robots, but yeah, I like to make sure that everyone gets a naming every now and then, and we haven't used you in a while. Remember, keep these catapults in range of your great general and make them move and fire. Is it a bug? No, it's clearly a feature. Jono leads the charge, takes the capital. Wonderful. The problem with taking a capital like this is that you start to lose diplomatic favor. Minus five for every one you own. It's a kind of a way the AI makes sure that you can't get a diplomatic victory even though you're taking capitals. I mean, you know, we can ignore that and we can still get one anyway. But it's well worth keeping an eye on if you're planning on going for a slightly more peaceful game. Fun little fact for you. When you are attacking the new Sundieta Kita version of Mali, he gets markets that have great work slots in them. And if you take over those markets, they will still have great work slots in them. Now, I haven't taken over a market just yet, but there are a couple on the map in various places. So it's always worth keeping an eye on this. There are no walls up at the moment, but we don't know if that's going to remain the case. So I'll keep the siege equipment, the battering ram at the front line just in case, and I'll start to repair the commercial hubs. That's a very good source of gold and really good way of getting some great merchants. When you're at war for a long period of time, Gold can often be one of the most limiting factors, so getting a good source of it early on can be very handy indeed. One thing to remember as well, great people. Great people are the best recon units in the game. If they get killed, they literally teleport back to whichever is the closest city to the one that they left. Just moving my governor forward just to keep the loyalty in this city for a few turns. But if I send Hannibal, who's currently not doing anything because he's only got ancient era troops around him, none of those get boosted, I'm just gonna run him forward and use him as a scout. I now know that Jen is there and walls are being put up. So I want to take that city as, uh, as soon as I can. It helps me to explore one, two, three cities. Marley still has six, so I can only see half of them right now. So we've got to keep keep fighting here. There's feudalism. It's a replacement for the Agogi card. It's feudal contracts now. And instead of getting builders faster, we can get builders with plus two charges. Very handy. General points, discipline, conscription. We're still getting the plus three combat strength from Gorgo. There you go. I think it was very recent that Mali has discovered walls because they're starting to pop up in every city. Luckily for us, Mali has quite a big combat uh, production penalty against buildings and walls are one of them. So I'm hoping those units should be able to take care of that city. My catapults are gonna head to the south. I'm just doing lots of damage against this city. Now I could attack the swordsman. It would be fairly straight up, but there is a river here. So I'm gonna encourage him to attack me. He's probably gonna go into the city actually which is not a bad idea i'm gonna move the warrior around to try and pull the swordsman around equally we can use our great generals who are currently not being used for anything else to kind of distract the enemy it will see the fact that it can destroy in its own head the great general by moving the swordsman through and attacking that tile uh, and it'll just teleport back to my own city so i won't lose anything but it can be quite a fun little way of doing that uh, let's just go and take this city quickly before it flips by flips i mean puts up walls you know what i mean mercenaries now professional armies 
is the card that lives in Mercenaries, which gives me a half price gold discount on Pikeman or any troop upgrade. Very handy to have. One thing we can see is actually happening is that this wand of a Jebel Bakal is being constructed by Mali, which is very, very handy. It means that all their production is going into it and they're not putting walls up in their city. Ah, uh, we didn't actually manage to pull the swordsman out this time. The AI doesn't always go through that trick, but it is quite a fun one when they do. Here's the catapult. The strength of the city's gone up by 10 because the swordsman's inside it, but shouldn't be a problem overall because now I've got catapults helping out with the attack. One attack, two attacks, seven population city is taken and the loyalty, there we go, is stabilizing a lot more now. The more cities you take in a very localized area, the better that gets. One, two, and three. We've also got a city to the north. Loyalty is more of a problem in that city, weirdly, but I'm just going to keep moving my governors around to make sure that I don't lose a city to loyalty. Brazil. I've just met someone, which is a little bit of a problem. I wish I hadn't met anybody there, because I could have gone through this war not to deliver any grievances, and they would have never known about it, but alas, they can see the grievances of 400 against Mali. That's why they've got minus 40 against me. I'm going to try and charm them a little bit. Sometimes you can just declare friendship. It's not often it allows you to do that. It's well worth giving it a go. They have some mercury for me, and we can actually do some trading with Brazil before they dislike me. Oh, they've actually got great works. Perfect. This is one of the AI that actually has been making these. They're all two culture great works. None of them are any better than the others, but I can ask for all these things in exchange for my luxuries. Look at that. This is going to be quite a good deal. There you go. Now, even if they denounce me in a couple of turns, I've already got the trade deal I was after. And now that Brazil's at war, that's actually quite lucky. This city is now under siege because the galley is providing the siege from the ocean side. So that worked really nicely. Now, as mentioned before, I'm going to be using my great general to charge forward and scout, see what we can find in this direction as the rest of my troops follow shortly behind. I've been saving up envoys and I can now take over Geneva. Now Geneva itself will only give me 15% science when I'm not at war, so I won't get it for a little while, but what I will get is a good chunk of visibility in this area and you can now see where a lot of the Greek cities are. One, two, three, very minimum four, five. They're spread out nicely. There's a huge amount of space between me and Macedon, so I don't even need to go to war immediately here. Go on, Hannibal, show me everything. Okay, a walled city. Luckily for me, I have a battering ram on the way. I'm gonna just take a moment for my city to kind of pull everyone together in a logical way promote everyone, make sure everyone's good. But we do have two catapults here as well as battering ram. So we've got the defensive and uh, offensive sort of array of units to make this work. This city has no walls. 37 strength is quite a lot. We should be fine. Oh yeah, Brazil helped. They helped out by attacking that. Very, very nice. That's the city taken. Yep, we pushed Brazil out. We don't have open borders with them. Get out of my land. Welcome to the fold, Salty Tech. Not a vampire today. You are a wonderful, proud hoplite. Always keep one eye on era score, even if it's not something you're going to get anytime soon. Building a plus three campus is always going to give you era score the first time you do it. And Armar actually has the opportunity to get a plus five. That's wonderful. It's always better to kind of diversify and take the opportunities as given to you. And you know, sometimes it can be really, really easy to focus on getting your unique district when actually, you know, balancing it out a little bit can be a lot of fun. Or meet your shower. If I walk a unit over that, I get the most up-to-date heavy cavalry unit that I've unlocked. So I would get a heavy chariot. If I wait and get it with, uh, once I've got stirrups, I'd get a free knight, which would be pretty cool. But I think I'll probably just take it as is for now. So we'll send a unit over to go and claim that. Battering Ram makes its way forward. How many cities are we still dealing with? Three, and there's five population in this one, five in that one, which means there's another city with two population just behind. Not too bad. Great General will still give me visibility. My catapults just making their way around, but don't forget they're in range of Great Generals, which means they can move and fire. Very handy skill, that one. Just looking at era score, seven turns to get it all. It's going to be quite tough, actually, to make sure that we've got everything. Now, as I get military tactics, that will be my first medieval tech. that will give me one era score. If I chop out this campus, that'll be another three. That'll get me to four, which means I'll be on 38 out of 42. If I knock Marley out of the game, which is going to be quite tough, 
I could get five, but I could also try and rush Statue of Zeus by chopping it down. Difficult to know which is the best idea on that one. Well, let's at least chop this out. I think that's going to be good. What was my golden age again? It was every time I get an inspiration, I get an era score. Four trade routes, quad room kill, two campuses, found a religion, ten pop, two markets. They're always more difficult to get civic boosts than tech boosts, I find. Just a little bit more fiddly. Buying an amphitheater would give me a bonus vote, so that something to consider. I think the best luck we're going to have is if we take Marley out of the game, which I think we should be able to do if we make a concerted push here. One, two, three, and this city should fall next turn. One, two, and that would be three. Take the city. Beautiful. Oh, they're almost getting loyal now. Almost. It's just it's always the last few hits that are the most problematic. Catapult hit one. Catapult hit two. Warrior hit number three, followed up by helicopter kicker. It's going to be right on the line as we take it. Not quite, but next turn hopefully. We stole Etamananki, by the way, which is a great, great wonder that makes all of my marsh tiles and the floodplains in this city provide a lot more science. That's really good. You'll note that a lot of my cities are producing builders. I really like making builders after I take over a city. Often it can be cheaper than trying to go straight out for like a district or something like that, but you can get a nice five charge builder to pop along and fix everything in a city, just ready for it to be incorporated into your empire and, and you know, very quickly come up with something useful. I'm going to breathe change Strategos to Diplomatic League. Now this gives my first envoy uh, worth two rather than one. Auckland hasn't been suzerain by anybody just yet so I've just put two envoys with them and in two turns I'll take a mercenary envoy and I'll be able to get two era score from that city state so that'll be good. I also invested in a couple of builders to wander over and chop out the Statue of Zeus combined with the Warlord's Throne which is now giving me 20% production in every city for five turns every time I take over a city. We suddenly have a lot more production than we did before. I'm going to treat myself to Pingala and Researcher. I'm going to take that. It should give me about, I'd say, seven extra science per turn. Look at that. 39 science rather than 32. These little incremental boosts that keep me technologically relevant as I'm going to war. One era score, military tactics, and we've discovered a pikeman. That is a huge upgrade for us. It is expensive though. 240 gold. Well, I'll be able to shave that down to 120 with professional army. Here's Auckland. I'm going to just take them over for the two era score and they will show us a lot more of the map, including this little death island of barbarians. That's uh, it's rather frightening. It's a good chance that Macedon will want to destroy Auckland, but we'll keep an eye on it. If you wanted to see how powerful this tactic was, by the way, you know, this, this early game war with Gorgo, have a look at the cities and population. This gives you a sense of how strong every empire is. Brazil has seven cities and 24 pop. Macedon, six cities and 27. I have 12 cities and 53. I have twice the population. That's twice as many citizens to produce yields, to get gold and science and culture, all of the good stuff they go helicopter kicker got their mark perfect when the game offers you a plus three commercial hub you go for it i'm picking districts as i say based on each city's preference what i think i'm going to get the most boosts from each time campus is complete though three era score and five extra science per turn big deal. Russia. Hello Russia. There's a lot of very cultured people on this map which is normally if you're playing Greece you basically get to dictate how many of the great early game writers you get but in this game we haven't had that luck but no worries we've already found Russia and look they're willing to give me quite a lot of gold for my luxuries. That's normally a good sign. It's worth having a play around the deal. Look what I can get. Two of their luxuries as well as 24 gold per turn and 240 gold up front. Perfect. Now let's get rid of feudal contract briefly. I've got enough actually no discipline got enough units it's just about making sure the ones we've got are working nicely and i'm going to give myself urban planning no we're going to give ourselves settlers i'm going to make myself uh some more cities i need to just expand into this land and make sure that i really obtain all of the benefit from it marley's last city has walls was the way isn't it no worries we don't need to kill it this particular era because i do have a wonder that's going to get finished that should do it for me i should get a golden age nicely from that but i've got my catapults on the way we've got our siege equipment it's just a matter of time before it falls is this going to give me the wonder oh next turn next turn and we'll chop that out it's hop light though i'm going to upgrade this to my first pikeman now that gets the benefit of the great general and can attack the city with 53 strength so we are 
start very nicely getting on side now. The problem with Macedon, my next probable target, is that I've seen that they've got not only crossbow, but also men at arms. Now, men at arms are 45 strength, which is the same as my pikemen. So I have no technological advantage over them at the moment. Going for an all out attack right now, it's debatable as to whether that would be a good idea or not. Let's try this, chopping out. There we go, Statue of Zeus. I get three archers, three spearmen, and a battering ram, as well as 50% extra production towards anti cav units, including my new very powerful pikemen. So if I'm gonna rush Macedon, this is a very good way of doing it. This is a lot of new troops and the ability to create new troops going forward, but it also gives me the era score to get into that golden age I've been after as well. Oh yes, of course, it gives me hoplites rather than spearmen. Oh, that's a nice change. Well, seeing as we've got such a large army, I am gonna start making them march towards Greece. We need to make sure that every single unit is upgraded by the time it gets there, but there's no harm in doing it. There is no harm in doing it. We might be able to even kill Geneva on the way, depending on whether or not we think it's going to be more value to us or not. I think it probably is more value keeping it on side because of the visibility it gives us over Greece. Plus, I'm going to get 15% extra science very soon. Mali is not long for this world. Horseback riding done. Construction next up on the block. The Golden Age is here. Macedon is in a Dark Age. That is a wonderful combination. That means when we attack them, I'll be able to hold their cities very easily and probably give them loyalty penalties whilst I'm doing it. Now, if you go into a middle, what, sort of classical or medieval era Golden Age, and you have the option to press Exodus the Evangelists, and there's still a religion to claim, my goodness, you should do it. Now, I am getting some profit points. I think I own one holy site, probably in one of my conquered cities. Oh, yes, the city-state. I see. But this will mean that I can get my own religion. It does a few things for me. Firstly, boosts theology. Great. Second, encourages you to build temples for monarchy. Even better. Third, means you can go to theocracy and use this card, Wars of Religion. Now, that will give you full combat strength in all combats as long as it's not religious. Stack that with oligarchy, you get plus eight. With great generals, plus 13. With my three military policies, plus 16. This is a button you want to press to make sure that you get benefit from it later. Trust me, you want a religion. Of course, there are other, uh, you know, good options. We could have gone for monumentality. I don't really have a lot of faith and gold right now to use that with, but having settlers and builders pop out of everywhere is always a good thing. Getting extra culture is always good. Having more boosts from Eurekas and Inspirations, again, these are all things that work really well, but I am just a, a huge, <laughs> quite literally a huge convert to getting a religion on side. Here we go. Pikemen are here, and we're starting to do some really good damage now. This one is just sort of sitting here absorbing the city attacks whilst my two catapults deal the damage and we should be able to take Marley out next turn. A World Congress, it's always worth having a look to see if anything will benefit you. I always like uh, culture bombs if we can get them and I'm going to be trading with Geneva a little bit to get some gold. So Scientific City State will vote on that. I've only got one vote on each so it's unlikely we'll be able to change anything but we did just win both. Ah, wonderful. The game gives us draws, clearly. There you go. It's the sort of thing we love. 50% uh, production towards settlers is always really handy, but natural philosophy doubles my campus adjacency, and we've now got two or three of them popping up everywhere now. 71 science per term. There we go. We're really making the economy of our empire work for us now, and little feudalism farm triangles working in my capital as well. More great people in my capital. Yes, it's happy. We can, we can really start to get some decent great people points. I'm looking for this scientist, actually. That's a really good one. Let's finish the library up. We've got a library in Armagh being finished. Oh, where do you think you're going, Mr. Barbarian? Didn't think so. That'll put me with another great scientist point, and then we've got two, and then another two coming in from Sparta, so we should guarantee that we get her, which is lovely. One attack, two attack, and then we can go three and four. Marley is out of the game. Ah, dear. Sorry to see the... Sorry to see you go, but I will take the five era score. So from that little early game war, defeating one, two, three, four city-states, as well as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight deity cities. We now have 14 cities, and I only built one of them myself. So there you go. Quite a balanced early game strategy, this one, I'd say. City-state emergency. Okay, well, we'll vote down on it. The AI is probably going to vote upwards on this one at some point. Yeah, Macedon has actually declared war on me there. Very interesting. That means they're probably going to attack Auckland and Geneva, which is, is fine. It's fine. It'll distract their troops and hopefully weaken them a little bit. My army is still a long way off. We are nowhere near the AI at the moment, but that's okay. We'll take our time. We'll arrive 
just when we want to arrive and no earlier. I'm just hanging my units in my territory briefly whilst I look to upgrade pretty much all of them. I'm just saving up some gold to do that with. I'd rather charge over with pikemen and knights and crossbows and then go after Greece or Macedon like that. But I think we should have the army to do it. It just needs upgrading. Whilst I've got some good deals coming in, 34 gold per turn from deals. Yeah, it makes sense to just kind of wait as long as I can, really. Apprenticeship gives us an extra production on all of our mines, which is really good. Once you get to this point, hopefully, you'll never really get to a point where you run out of production after this, so it's very nice to have. When we go to war, I'm giving Victor Garrison Commander five combat strength in a city when you defend, which is okay, but four loyalty per turn towards all cities within nine tiles. To plunk him down in the middle of your cap, territory and maintaining loyalty is much much easier if you're going to pick up any great writer Rumi is a fantastic one the three great writers that were added in one of the more recent updates all give great works that produce four culture rather than two really really handy so if i just pop one down you'll see immediately that the one i had before is two culture two tourism this one is four culture four tourism excellent makes a huge difference people always say turn 100 100 science it's very difficult to get that in all honesty unless you've got a very decent tactic and i haven't been focusing on science at all and i'm already up to 82 so pretty good i'm using all of my conquered territory and production here to give myself good chances at getting wonders the apadana in my capital combined with an amphitheater means i could get a lot of great works in the city and produce a lot of pingala based culture which i really like the sound of so we'll do that there is Simon Boulevard, the last person on the map, and we have an opportunity to make an actual friend here. They don't know of any of the grievances that I have performed on this map so far, so they are currently showing us only minus five. I'll send a friendship declaration. Nope, not worth it, but first turn, send a delegation. That's plus three, so we've gone from minus five to minus two. We'll send them open borders. I don't mind if I pay a little bit for that. That's plus three, so we're now on plus one, and I just need to give him a gift now, so I'm going to give him the citrus like so that means favorable trade deals to him plus nine hopefully the turn will roll over and he'll want to be my friend so i'm just selecting a pikeman next to a great general in my land and you can see the sort of combat strength i've got even against macedon's unique units i've got a lot of attack strength uh, 62 i've got good strength against the crossbows against the trebuchets i think promoted units are going to be absolutely fine especially because i now have my first knight now ideally salty tech and the other knight Named units are the ones I'm going to upgrade first. There's Jono, and it's not favoritism, they're just better. They're promoted, and uh, more importantly, they're also at the front line. So we'll give those all the good promotions and we'll start to chuck my army forward even further. Yeah, Geneva and Auckland are hugely hammering Macedon right now. All of their troops are in disarray as they're being pulled in two different directions, so the city state couldn't have done anything more for me here. Uh, Boulevard doesn't really want to do anything in terms of getting involved, but he's at war with Pedro. Very very good to know going forward. I think with my new promoted units, we're going to go and start to charge forward. Although oh, I should have sent a trader over a little bit sooner. If I could get a trader over to Geneva, that'll give me a lot easier movement over the land. We can actually move at a, at a decent rate. Come on, Boulevard, you want to join in? You want to join in? What do they want? They like civilizations with highly promoted units. Well, if we keep promoting our units, then we should be fine. Oh, there's a religion, by the way. Perfect. We get near a score just from getting getting the great person but then we can make our own religion and we can get some more era score from that ideally we're looking for a religion that spreads really nicely so that it gives us more faith that way we can actually make sure that we can spread it around my empire nicely and we're looking for something that maybe gives crusade later on in the game all of my faith is going to be into but put into missionaries so we can't do anything like jesuit education warrior monks reliquaries stuff like that's not really going to work for us religious community though that could give us a lot more gold from trade routes you don't need a lot of your religion to get a huge benefit from that and i'm gonna go for pilgrimage as well two faith for each city following the religion that means now that my religion has started i've only got it in the one city but a missionary is only 150 faith it's got five charges because of my golden age and i can spread it around quickly and start accumulating even more faith per turn so the campus adjacency is good but i'm gonna just swap it now for aesthetics i've got a good chunk of early game science and the 26 culture per turn 
earn from my Acropolis bonuses. I mean, that is really, really handy, especially when I start doing things like this. This is Hanging Gardens. It was a very cheap wonder. And when you are going for a war game with low amenities, it's brilliant. Now, I have loads and loads of cities and having growth of 15% increase. So this is population growth in every single one of my cities. That adds up and it's really, really effective. It's probably going to be worth, I'd say, about 10% extra population over the course of the game. Plus, it just gave me another bunch of adjacency with my Acropolis in that city. So that makes a huge difference. And also Stonehenge, which is quite cool. It's only nine turns. It's a lot of very handy stuff. It's quite cheap, actually. Let's get the aqueduct in this city. Uh, take off uh, military engineering so that I'm not doubling up on it. Actually, printing. Build two universities. Do I know what a university is? No, education. We're going to bounce between a few things here, but I just, I don't want to get any research done on anything I haven't got the inspiration for. Just doesn't make sense in my head. My army is taking, mm, I'd say, roughly forever to move across. But luckily for me, I've got forever. I'm <laughs> just taking our time moving everything over. And first contact with the enemy as well. My knight, 53 strength because of a plus three from Gorgo's ability. We will attack the catapult and just do lots of damage before it can really claim any defense. Geneva is just brutally attacking Macedon right now. This is exactly where we wanted to find them. Just in the middle of a huge field. And I can have some sort of skirmish war with my nicely maneuverable troops. There we go, City State is just really brutally trapping Macedon's army here and Auckland is helping as well. Auckland has lost pretty much all of its army. It's uh, got the bad end of the deal here because the very fortified Macedonian cities of that side. But my great general has uh, arrived. This catapult is very slow and that crossbow does a lot of damage. So I'm actually going to skip over here and just charge in like that. Although saying that, I have left my battering ram totally exposed. That that was a bad move. Luckily, I've got a second one, but oh, that was a bad move. Second city with my religion and another two faith per turn. Just helps me to get the next missionary out. We can keep spreading my religion. All I need is the majority of my cities following it. Now, Russia does have their religion here, which is a bit annoying, but it's going to give me feed the world in the meantime. So it's not the worst thing if I do start following it. Okay, the AI didn't take the opportunity to kill my battering ram. I will take that as a bit of forgiveness. Thank you very much. I'm Iriscourt from getting my first first kill next to that great general which is good and this knight can get its first promotion. This is the tree down the left hand side if you want your knights to attack cities. This is the tree on the right hand side if you want to run around pillaging and attacking units. Route against damage units that's actually really really handy so I'm going to do that. This is going to be my unit killer. The pikeman walks in gets the kill and I'm still gaining culture every time I get a kill. Very very handy indeed. I boosted guilds by the way because I finished two markets in my territory. Again I'm just bound Balancing this all up, two temples. I'm actually, I'm gonna let that one run through because I'd like a better government, but I'm pretty good at avoiding all of this stuff. If you need a couple of governors and you're not sure what to do, it's well worth having a look either at Magnus and going three promotions into Black Marketeer. Now, if you're producing lots of strategic resource units like frigates, bombards, knights, men at arms, anything like that, you can get huge, huge discounts. Otherwise, Moksha, two promotions and you get laying on of hands. People think this is for religious units. Units. It's not. It's for any unit. Very, very handy. So we're going to be picking him up and uh, yeah, just keeping him on side for the front line. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedge, Mushkin. Mandeltort, Ezri Dax, Deeble Time, Shoelace, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Clint Hennes, Dr. Bobby, Polar Wallabear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster. Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!